The first generation Q5 was such a huge sales success for Audi when it made its debut nearly 10 years ago that when the company decided to introduce a second generation model, they really took a much more evolutionary approach. Now, despite heavy criticism from the automotive press, sales of the second generation model have been hugely successful with Audi moving nearly 70,000 units for all of 2018. So this week they've loaned me the latest version of the Audi Q5, this one being the fire-breathing SQ5 that has the same turbocharged V6 that also powers the Porsche Macan so what I want to know is, is the 2019 Audi SQ5 still the high performance crossover to get? That's what we're here to find out. So looking at the design of the all new SQ5, you can see Audi really has been playing it safe with the current design trends. In the past, they really were much more innovative, but really their more conservative look has hasn't really affected their overall sales. Now, as you guys know, with the Q5 and the SQ5, you're gonna immediately distinguish the SQ5 from the unique SQ5 badge, this satin platinum finish in the grill, and then all SQ5s will have the signature LED uh, headlights, which are, which are an LED low beam, high beam, LED turn signals, and then LED running lights. A new package for 2019 is actually a black optics package that will black out the silver painted accents here and then give you unique uh, wheels and tires to kind of go with that. Now, overall, I think the SQ5 is still a relative handsome vehicle. This car still rides on the Volkswagen MLB Evo platform that also underpins the A4 and A5 and the Porsche Macan, which is technically based on the previous generation. Now, my tester, uh, being the top of the line prestige trim, has these optional 21-inch wheels. They're wrapped in 255 series summer tires. However, we're in the middle of winter here in DC, so Audi has put some Pirelli Soto Zero winter tires. These wheels are $1,000 options. The red brake calipers that you see are also part of a $3,000 sport package that my tester has that also rolls in and adjusts adjustable air suspension. This is the first generation Audi to get an air suspension and Audi says you can raise the ground clearance from like seven to nine inches. Now, um, size-wise, the SQ5 hasn't really changed. It's still around at 111 inch long wheelbase and 183.9 inches long. This is still right in the heart of the compact segment. If you're gonna compare it to like Porsche's Macan, the Audi is slightly shorter and slightly narrower versus its Porsche cousin. Now at the back, again, you really have to squint hard to see the changes that Audi has made to this new generation. You have the signature Audi taillights, which are full LEDs. They also offer a dynamic turn signal, which was included with this next generation. You have a little subtle SQ5 badge. And then the biggest controversy that I complained about when I reviewed this car last year is the fake exhaust tips that you have here, where this right, right here isn't actually even the uh, exhaust. Audi S models typically have a quad exhaust, but I'll let you guys hear what this engine sounds like really quick. So despite the fake look, the engine sounds pretty good. Remember, this is still the same three liter turbocharged V6 that powers the Porsche Macan. Now, in terms of the cargo capacity, the SQ5 is pretty competitive, just like the Q5. You're looking at around 25.1 cubic feet of space with the rear seats up. Remember, there's no third road available. If you fold down those rear seats, you get around 53.1 cubic feet, which is pretty good, a little bit less than what you get in the Volvo. And underneath here, Audi does give you a nice temporary spare tire, so you don't have to deal with a fix a flat kit. So Audis are pretty well known for having really nice interiors. So let's hop into the inside of the 2019 SQ5 and see it, if it lives up to the hype. Now you can see here is the current key fob for Audi. I've shown you guys this key before on all the current newer Audi products. You can see 
it shows that you have the performance uh, division or an S line uh, when you guys go for like an SQ5 or an S3 or an S, um, S4 or something like that. But regardless, just keep the key fob in your pocket. As you approach the door handle, you'll notice that there's a little indentation portion here. Just touch your finger there. That'll lock the doors for you. The mirrors are also electrically fold. You can change that in the settings if you guys don't want that to happen. If you want to unlock it, just touch the back of the handle. Audi does a sensor and that will unlock the door for you. Now you can see here, my tester has the pretty common black uh, interior here with the diamond quilted stitching and the contrasting white stitching. Audi offers several different interior color options. Um, there's a warm weather package that'll kind of change the way the looks, the seats look, that'll give you the ventilation and perforated seats. That's the only way you can get cooled seats. If you guys want cooled seats, you're kind of limited on the color. They offer this in like gray, black, or also a full red leather. But keep in mind, if you guys want this red leather or the red leather or this like diamond quilt, you can't get cooled seats. So I'm a little annoyed with that. Audi does give you a 12 way power adjustable seat with two person memory. You also have this nice little manual thigh extender here, uh, which is good. These sports seats are included with the S-Line package along with that sportier looking steering wheel, which is definitely nice. Now stepping into the interior of this vehicle, you can see really nice, easy step in height, kind of what you expect in an SUV like this. And then when you wanna shut the door, really nice solid sounding door, which is typical of a European or a German car. And then if you wanna start the vehicle up, you can see here, Audi does the little button to start the engine down here. Just put your foot on the brake, keep the key fob in here, push this button here and it'll fire right up. As you can see, the mirrors will also unfold when you start it up. The uh, virtual cockpit display that's just standard on the premium plus trims and up also shows you a nice little display over there where you can show the navigation. You also have a nice little 8.3 inch display over here, which by the way, this isn't a touch screen, remember? This is Audi's MMI interface here with the handwriting pad here, the touch sensitive pad, and then you also have a rotary dial. It all looks very nice. This interior hasn't changed from the 2018 model that I showed you. You can see here, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto is included, which is nice. The engine. <laughs> it roars to life and it sounds fantastic, which we'll go into the test drive later on. Now, in terms of the materials here, as you can see, Audi doesn't really do a full leather stitching on the dash. You kind of have to go for an upper trim here, but you do have, you know, this nice soft touch uh, injection molded plastic, which honestly could be a little softer. Um, the higher end or the upper Audi models like an A8, for example, or uh, or an A7 will have this full stitching. My tester has the $500 carbon fiber inlay, uh, which replaces the aluminum trim with some genuine carbon fiber. Uh, the door panels here you can see are also soft touch, but could be a little softer. You have an aluminum accented door handle, more of that carbon fiber trim. The windows are one touch automatic for all four, kind of expected that with a premium vehicle like this, which is nice. Um, you have a nice padded area here where your, your arms would rest. It's all hard touch plastic down here with more storage. You can open up the rear lift gate over there. And then Audi, as you can see, does the headlight controls over here, um, which is definitely nice. The virtual cockpit display, as you can see, is basically interchangeable, or you can customize it to the way you want it to look. I have it showing the uh, Audi Google Earth map display there, which is really nice. You can also kind of zoom in and zoom out just like you would on the actual display there. If you don't wanna see this, you can push the view button here on the steering wheel. That'll make the gauges larger, or you can also change the display. Audi has like a sport display on the S models where you can put the tack front and center. Um, you can also just push this little arrow button over here. It'll show your consumption, audio, phone information, and then the GP as you can see, just push the view button again and you can see it shows a little bit of a different display. Really cool. If you guys actually wanna change the display here, you kinda of just push this little left button here. You can go to layout and you can see here, switch it back over to the sport layout. Audi actually, the, the car actually tells you it takes a second for it to change over. You can only do this when the vehicle is stopped uh, and then you have to wait for it to basically change the view, which doesn't take too long. As you can see here, there's with the tack front and center. Looks very nice. And then you can also go to the smaller view if you guys would like to do so. So um, the virtual cockpit display is still probably one of the best in the business. Love the virtual cockpit display. A lot of you are probably gonna you know, buy an Audi just because of that. Now, over here on the center stack, you can see pretty traditional design. Um, the 8.4 inch display here looks fantastic. A lot of you will really like the fact that it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto as standard equipment, of course. Um, remember, it's not a touch screen. You have to use this little pad or the little knob to kind of scroll around, go to your different, you know, apps that you want to go to you can see it does have the full ways integration if you guys you know plan to use that um, as opposed to the audi gps function 
definitely doesn't look as good as the Google Earth display, but everybody likes to use Waze when you want to, you know, scout out for cops or any um, traffic jams and whatnot. Now, going back to Audi MMI, you can see there's the Audi interface. Not going to go too much in debt with this because I've shown you guys this before. You can see there's your Audi Drive Select. Uh, Audi offers several different drive modes, including an individual. This vehicle does have that adjustable air suspension where it'll basically raise and lower itself. You can see it even shows you how much it's actually going up. Um, when it's in its highest setting, the vehicle offers about nine inches of ground clearance, which is pretty good, honestly. And then if you want to go to vehicle settings, uh, Audi offers you several different options here where you can change the interior mood lighting. Uh, I have it on the maritime blue. You can also do red, white, or Audi also allows you to do it where it's linked to the drive select, or you can just do a custom color, whatever color you'd like. Um, so again, all the luxury features you kind of expect. It does have a little bit of a learning curve, um, but whenever you're stuck, just push the menu button over there. It'll take you back to the menu, or you can just go to Apple CarPlay. Um, all the buttons and knobs here, they just have a nice, satisfying, high quality click. So that's kind of what you expect with Audis here. You have three zone automatic climate control. You can see there's three level heated seats. This is where the cooled seat option would be if you guys got that warm weather package. Uh, this kind of has a proximity sensor, which is really cool. Like the LCD display over there, you have another USB port, a place where you can put your phone. This controls the eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. You can see it has a manual mode and a sport mode. You also have paddles on the wheel, which is nice when you put the vehicle into reverse. You can see Audi gives you a top-down 360 camera, which is standard on the Prestige model. You have front and rear parking sensors. The camera quality is fantastic, one of the best in the business. Don't really expect anything less from Audi than being a German brand. You can see your volume knob is over here we can also skip soundtracks this is a great place for your phone you have two cup holders here you can also slide this forward and back to give you a little bit more storage and then over here you can see audi gives you a little bit more storage over there with another usb port i find the seats to be extremely comfortable and supportive um, love the way they look would definitely consider the red leather option but then i really want the cooled seats so i'd have to go for that warm weather package above you the panoramic sunroof is standard equipment uh, if you guys don't want a pano sunroof audi lets you delete this for free so you don't have to get the pano roof which is good over here, the glove compartment is massively huge. You have a uh, felt-lined, uh, damped door, which is definitely nice. So, good amount of storage in this car. Still a very premium interior, but not quite as premium feeling as something like the Mercedes-Benz GLC. Um, this is on par with what BMW offers in the current X3, however, and better than the Alfa Romeo Stelvio. And uh, then I also find it to be more attractive than the Lexus interiors, especially when you look at the uh, tech interfaces. So hopping into the back seat of the SQ5, you can see despite the fact that this is a smaller crossover, uh, this particular model has a fair amount of rear seat legroom. Audi rates it at around 37.8 inches of actual space. You can see the floor has plenty of space for your legs and good underfoot storage or underfoot space here, but there is a fairly large hump here. My tester has three zone climate control, but it is missing heated rear seats. It's part of a cold weather package that also roll in the power rear or the manual sun shades. Now in terms of the materials, it is slightly soft touch on the uh, door panels here with that one touch window. You have a nice little armrest here that folds down that also gives you dual cup holders and overall um, really the the doors probably could open up a little bit larger the panoramic sunroof offers a good amount of space you have two map pockets here and i think a lot of people are going to find the back seats to be fairly use usable uh, for family duty so for the second generation SQ5, Audi replaced the old supercharged 3.0-liter V6. Instead, we now have a 3.0-liter turbocharged V6. It's a twin-scroll, single-turbo V6 with the turbocharger placed in the center here, kind of like that hot V configuration uh, to help mitigate lag. And horsepower actually is a little bit less than what you got in the previous generation. Before, in 2018, Audi rated the engine at 354 horsepower. However, that was the metric horsepower. It's now been re or changed to 349 horsepower. Still good power, and then you also get 369 foot-pounds of torque so that's more torque than what you got in the old supercharged v6 v6 this is also more power than what you get in porsche's macan s both the 2018 model and the refresh 2019 model so this has a really good amount of power now uh, it all goes out through audi's quattro uh, signature all-wheel drive system with a 40 60 uh, power split with the ability to send up to 75 percent of the power to the rear wheels my tester also has the dynamic steering package option and that sport and differential to kind of help with torque vectoring now this vehicle is relatively heavy it weighs a tick over 4,300 pounds. Audi says it'll tow a maximum of 4,400 pounds through the standard eight-speed ZF automatic transmission. Big difference versus the Porsche Macan, which has a seven-speed PDK. And fuel economy is actually not bad. It's rated at 19 in the city, 24 on the highway. Please make sure and put premium gas in it. Let's get this out on the road and see how it all performs. So about a year ago when I drove the all new SQ5, I came away pretty impressed. I proclaimed it to be one of the most perfect or near perfect um, sport 
compact crossovers. Basically, if you guys need a, or you're looking to replace your sports sedan, but you need an SUV because everybody gets an SUV, this is to, the one to get. Now, after driving vehicles like the new Mercedes GLC, the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, do I still feel the same way about the SQ5? And Audi didn't make any changes to this vehicle for 2019. It's still the same great car, aside from the lower price tag. Now, first sitting off in the 19 model, it's a very familiar setup. If you guys have driven the Q5 with the two liter turbo, um, this one basically is just kind of beefed up in every way. It's got a lovely, lovely exhaust note. <laughs> <laughs> that makes the prerequisite burping and farting noises from the exhaust, and which is good because the exhaust is fake on the outside, but at least it sounds really good. Now, of course, the sound is slightly amplified if you guys have it in its dynamic setting, which I have it in right now. Audi basically allows you to custom tailor the drive modes, even the engine sound, the sport differential, the dynamic steering. This car is just going to remind you constantly that it's a premium car, and it's always going to remind you that this is Audi's you know, best-selling model because it's so well-rounded. <laughs> the paddles would even really work well. <laughs> this is seriously just one really, really great driving crossover. And it will make you a believer of crossovers. Now, granted, the SQ5 is definitely not the um, quickest accelerating, the sportiest handling. I would easily give that distinction to the uh, Alfa Romeo Stelvio Quadrifoglio, but again, the Stelvio Quadrifoglio is kind of above this rank. If Audi would come out with an RS SQ5 or RS Q5 or whatever it's called, um, that would essentially compete with something like that. BMW just showed off the new uh, X3M and X4M, which I'll be looking forward to testing later this year, which have Again, either 478 horsepower or 503 horsepower, which would be great. Now this at 349 horsepower is a still, still really good amount of power. Now, um, we'll go into the acceleration in just a moment. The first thing I actually do wanna test out is the Audi driver assistance package because it's now standard for 2019 on the Prestige model. If you kind of cycle over to here, you can see uh, the car has active lane keep assist. It's got the you know distance follower or whatnot. My tester also has a heads up display that's included. Basically, when you turn on the adaptive cruise control, um, you just use this little stock over here, you can set the distance, uh, and then you can basically just kind of follow the car in front of you. Uh, I have the cruise control set to 65 right now, and you can see the steering does keep in the lane, or the car does keep in the lane for you pretty well. Um, it also has traffic sign recognition. It has what Audi calls traffic jam assistance. So I have that turned on. Basically, if it senses that they're in a traffic jam, it'll help you know follow the car in front of you to a full stop. It'll help keep you in the lane. You can see the uh, display here does a pretty good job of showing you what's exactly in front of you and keeping in the lane. Um, this car also has the ability to communicate with traffic sign or traffic lights. I noticed when I pulled up to a few traffic signals, uh, the car would actually tell me how long the light's gonna stay green or it's gonna stay red or whenever it's gonna change to red. So I thought that was a really cool feature. It doesn't work at every uh, traffic light, unfortunately. Um, uh, Audi says it works with the uh, LTE in the car to communicate with certain traffic lights. So you kind of have to, uh, you know, see which intersection it works at. It works really well. It's the first feature that I've ever seen in a car like this. Now the rest of the car, in terms of the driving dynamics, the steering, uh, in the dynamic steering model, I'm noticing that the steering is much uh, more responsive. It has much more feedback to it. The car also still has a really good ride quality, which is great. Even though I'm on 21 inch wheels, I have it in its sharpest setting right now. It still will ride comfortably if a little bit on the firmer side, but again, you can kind of adjust that if you guys wanna switch over to comfort mode here. Uh, it'll actually raise the air suspension by one more notch and you notice the steering gets significantly lighter. The exhaust also gets a little bit quieter. The eight-speed automatic will seek out its top gears more often. And this is where most of you are probably gonna drive your SQ5. You're gonna leave it in its comfort setting or its automatic setting. Uh, and the vehicle uh, will basically just drive for you constantly while you know avoiding you know the traffic that likes to cut in front of you. Um, when you're dealing with rush hour traffic, the traffic jam assistance is a really, really nice feature to have for sure. So as you can see, I got caught in morning rush hour traffic here in the DC area. So I guess I can try to put the Audi traffic jam assistance to the test here. And as you can see, it basically works like every other adaptive cruise control system. The car is basically actively scanning around. It says traffic jam assistance active in the 
uh, virtual cockpit display here. It's basically showing me uh, the green lines sh saying that it's keeping me actively in the lane, which is basically the difference between a lot of other systems. The active lane keep assist continues to work even at these low speeds, whereas other systems will shut off at like 20 miles an hour. Audi's system continues to work. Now, Audi still requires you to keep your hands on the wheel, but as you can see here, I have it following on its closest following distance right now. It keeps probably a good car length ahead or behind the car in front of you. But in these kind of nerve or infuriating conditions when you're stuck in the middle of rush hour traffic trying to do a little test drive video, as you can see, the car comes to a complete stop. When the traffic in front of you continues to move forward, um, the car will also move forward on its own and then it'll actively keep you in the lane. So these kind of features, I know a lot of you, and again, right now it's kind of yelling at me to put my hands back on the wheel. A lot of you are somewhat apprehensive of the self-driving stuff. This can honestly make your daily commute a lot better, especially if you live in the big cities like I do, where you're constantly fighting rush hour traffic, trying to get to and from work. So finally getting away from the traffic, let's try the acceleration of this car. Oh, <laughs> wow, I forgot how fast this car actually is when you put your foot down. <laughs> now I know Audi says the zero to 60 time is around five seconds, which matches the performance of the Porsche Macan S, which it shouldn't match it because this is the Audi. It's supposed to be the lower, you know, less powerful, less fun version. I have to say the SQ5 is still a lot of fun when you find a back road, when you find a nice straight, the steering with the dynamic steering package, I'm noticing, you know, while it's not like sports sedan heavy, like you would expect uh, from like a Porsche or a BMW or, you know, even Mercedes products, it's definitely much improved over the, the one that I drove last year. It just provides a little bit more feedback through the front tires, which is good. The suspension in sport mode right now stays nice and flat. And that exhaust just always makes itself known and then if you want, you can also use the paddles. Oh, it'll even go to first. <laughs> and this is the whole reason why you bought an SQ5 over the regular Q5 because of that noise, the acceleration. And you know, when you guys get the whole sport package, the whole shebang, basically, this car is incredibly well-rounded. It'll, it'll, it'll make you forget that you're driving a crossover at times. And that's kind of the beauty of the uh, SQ5 or any of these high-performance vehicles or crossovers. They tend to make you forget that you're driving an SUV and they a lot of times will feel similarly to a sports sedan when you kick the passengers out, you put them in its you know dynamic or sport setting um, and just start attacking your favorite twisty back roads. Now the seats, I find them to be extremely comfortable as well. Uh, visibility in this vehicle is also good. It doesn't have any weird shapes that would kind of block um, your, view, your view or anything like that. It's just very traditional. Um, the quietness in this interior is also good. Aside from that lovely exhaust noise, there's very little in terms of wind noise, in terms of road noise, uh, no squeaks and rattles. The car just feels very solid, which is what you essentially look for uh, in a German vehicle or any luxury vehicle in, in general. They just always feel really solid, which is a really good thing. But overall, you know, <laughs> these crossovers, as much as I hate the fact that they are taking over the market, these high performance ones are something to look forward to. Uh, and even though this is a, you know, turbocharged V6, I found the fuel economy to also be relatively good. Uh, in my week's worth of testing, the car's trip computer has been telling me I've been averaging almost 22 miles to the gallon, which is not bad, 1924, it's on the higher end. And that's, you know, the mixture of city and highway driving. Uh, on the f only highway driving, I was able to get a, a close to 25 MPG. So the EPA numbers are kind of bang on right there where they're supposed to be. Um, you just have to make sure and put premium gas in this thing. But Audi certainly has developed a well-rounded crossover. It's hard to imagine how they could make this better, aside from the fact that they could just stuff the twin turbo V6 from the RS5 into this thing and call it an RS uh, Q5. So last year when I tested the all new 2018 Audi SQ5, I proclaimed it to have one of the best balances in terms of performance, luxury, and practicality in this compact SUV segment. So after spending the week with the 2019 model, there really isn't much to report in terms of changes. Really the biggest change is Audi introduced an all new trim level this year that lowered the price by $2,000. And they also introduced that black optics sport package. Now, even though the SQ5 is technically not the most powerful, it's not the quickest in this segment, the Mercedes, the Jet, 
Jag uh, and the Porsche are all a little bit quicker versus this car in terms of zero to 60. The SQ5 still delivers a lot in terms of balance for this segment. You have a really high quality interior that is spacious, that has the latest tech. You have looks that kind of fly a little bit under the radar, um, but you can easily distinguish it as an Audi product. And the handling is definitely on the sportier side. I really like the fact that the sport differential and the dynamic steering kind of fixes my issue that I have with Audis that um, tend to focus around the slightly numb steering. So if you guys are actually looking to purchase one of these compact, you know, um, high performance SUVs to replace your sports sedan, what's it gonna cost? Well, because of that new premium trim, it's a little bit decontented, decontented this car starts at around $52,800, which is about $2,000 less than last year's premium plus. Now, unfortunately, they also did increase the base price of the premium plus and the prestige. This prestige model that I'm driving stickers for a little over 62,000. It includes the Audi driver assistance package, the head up display, the Bang & Olufsen sound system. Uh, my tester with the $3,000 sport package, uh, the red color, the carbon fiber on the interior. This one stickers for a tick over $70,000, which is definitely a lot of money, but just keep in mind that vehicles like the sister car, the Porsche Macan, can easily kiss $80,000. The Mercedes can also easily top out over 70. Same with the Jag, uh, and same with the BMW X3 M40i. So you're gonna be paying roughly around 70,000, and the Audi, thankfully, represents the best balance for me. Just keep in mind that it's not necessarily the quickest vehicle in this segment. But I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on this 2019 Audi SQ5 Prestige. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, make sure you follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook, and as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video. Everybody's going to Tyson's Corner right now. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Oh no, this is not good. This is <sighs> That's not good, that's not good, that's not good. Oh shit. I shouldn't have taken this way. Uh oh. Now I'm stuck here for a little bit. Going with Vic to 495. me. How did I end up over here? Thanks to the traffic, basically. That's how I ended up.